Climate Project, um, which is about making medical devices more user friendly. And uh, my role on the project is to go out to hospitals, uh, talk to nurses, and watch them use these devices and, and see if things could be designed better to improve their performance, basically. Um, so, sticking with the comedy of human error, I thought I'd try and make a tenuous link with the original Shakespeare play, um, which apparently was one of his uh, first plays. Um, I, I only read it up briefly about this uh, yesterday, but the, <laughs> but the um, it's, it's a story about the confusion between two twins that are leaving very separate lives and they don't know of the other's existence. And this is an error that I'm going to return to a bit later on, uh, confusing things that look the same, um, but in very different circumstances. Um, so two, the two parts of my talk are basically going to be about um, the pervasiveness of human error and the frailties of our cognition, and then we're going to move on to resilience. So looking at those proactive strategies we might adopt to reduce the errors that we make. Um, like any good story, I'm going to try and weave in some drama, some humour, some tragedy, and even a bit of romance as well, um, just to um, keep your interest. Um, these pictures were all inspired by um, Error Diary, um, which is something that we've been developing at UCL. Um, it's a website where people can tweet to use social media to tweet their errors every day, and they use the hashtag Error Diary, and uh, we collate them, and that's uh, publicly available if you'd like to have a look. Um, but up in the top left-hand corner there, we've got um, someone entering a phone number, but they actually got the numbers mixed up. Um, someone pouring orange juice into their cereal uh, rather than milk. Um, the old red sock in the washing machine trick is... Uh, that can be really uh, damaging, and uh, going to work with uh, different shoes on. So uh, hopefully you would be able to relate to at least uh, some of these things. Um, one of the things that I really like about Error Diary is when you're uh, collating all of these errors, um, you can start to analyse sort of the underlying psychological principles of these different errors, and see that actually the same principles can underlie funny, frustrating, and even fatal errors. Um, so it's a bit small, so I'll, I'll read these out. The funny one is a girl that confused um, grapes with olives when she was preparing her lunch, and she put, put them on her hummus. Um, and the interesting thing about that one is that she said, oh, I knew this was going to happen. So she was aware of the risk, but she carried on doing it, and sure enough, she ended up making the mistake that she, that she thought she might. Um, one that was in the news, which was reported by someone, was that the police sent um, victims um, each other's email addresses. So basically, the person cut and paste um, all the victims' emails into the CC field instead of the blind copy field. Um, so every, every victim could see every other one's email. Um, just as an aside, you might think a bit about this in terms of a technological intervention, like what, what circumstances are there where you want to share hundreds of emails in a CC list? Maybe the email program should have warned the person, you know, you might not want to do this, do you want to put it in the blind copy field? Um, but we haven't got that yet, and these mistakes continue to happen. Um, and then the final one is the unfortunate case of a chemistry student um, that was uh, chewing their gum and dipping it infrequently into a bowl of powder that would add a sour taste to her gum. Um, but she also had a bowl of explosives as well. And you know, she dipped it into the bowl of explosives and actually uh, blew part of her head off. So, I mean, th th these, are the, these are the same underlying psychological principles. And we see that they can have funny, frustrating, but also very tragic consequences as well. So how, how does this relate to my day job, which is thinking about medical devices? Well, um, there are confusions in practice, and 
um, getting a quote from the New Zealand Medicines and Medical Device Safety Authority, um, they actually point out that uh, the subcutaneous uh, syringe driver here, which is programmed to push an injection very slowly over an hour, can actually be confused and has been confused with the, um, its sister model, which is over 24 hours. Um, its sister model is green instead of blue, and it's got a big 24 here instead of an hour. So you might think, you know, that's quite easily perceptually different, you know, how do people mix this up? But then if you think back to the olives and the grapes and the blind CC field and the CC field and the bubble gum, we, we know that people make these mistakes. Um, our own uh, safety authority, the NPSA, National Patient Safety Authority, um, they've released guidance on um, medication error as well in the Rapid Response uh, Report 19, if that might mean something to some people. But basically, they send out alerts every now and again when there's a trend in accidents um, to alert people to them so they can take corrective action. Um, that, that Rapid Response Report was actually alerting people to the confusion between um, doing calculations between millimetres an hour and millilitres an hour, and also between um, prescriptions over 24 hours and hours, and they actually advise that this should be um, reduced so people don't make these sorts of mistakes. And th this is a photo that I took recently as one of my studies, which is still ongoing. And um, it was basically in a small box on a crash trolley. So when um, nurses need to revive someone, this is part of their kit. And there's a warning label on one of the boxes which says that some drugs in this box have similar packaging. Well, it, is, is that enough? Like we've already seen with the grapes and the olives and uh, the bubble gum, you know, these, these things do happen. They, they've recognised the risk here and they've taken some initiative to warn people, but um, could more be done? So, turning to the second part of my talk, so we've covered like, the pervasiveness of human error and basically know how it's important in our everyday lives, um, to turn to resilience. Now resilience to human error is about the proactive strategies that we might develop and adopt um, to try and keep the system safe and to try and avoid making accidents. Um, so if we go over some examples, um, does anyone leave anything by their front door before they go to leave work? Yeah? So typically this might be an umbrella, but you could imagine that we could adapt it to be sort of uh, work reports or something similar. Um, and, and that's us recognising that cognitively we're quite frail in terms of remembering things when we're busy. And so we can adopt this strategy to, uh, to prevent us um, from forgetting things. Um, this is a photo of a chip and pin card. Um, there was a study carried out by one of our MSc students who noticed people adopting various strategies to stop them forgetting their card. So when it's in use, they might uh, stop multitasking and just concentrate on the transaction. Um, they might hold on to the card or hold on to the machine or even leave their wallet out as a cue to remembering the card. Um, and without this, we could imagine that without these strategies, people would forget. Uh, their cards more often. So on error, the Error Diary website, if you go and have a look there, we've also got a resilient strategies section as well, where people can report their resilient strategies that they use. Um, this one offered by this user um, is about the threat of her forgetting to use her Boots Advantage card when she goes to Boots. So she actually um, was planning to put the Boots gift cards next to the advantage card, so she remembered to use it. it it's a bit like uh, tripping over the umbrella as you, you go to work. You're placing something to remember in a procedure, um, so it, um, it, it brings itself up at the right point. And also, um, someone pointing out that you can get bracelets to remember uh, what breasts you need to feed your baby from. Um, uh, so, so you don't you don't forget. So presumably you swap these things around. 
Um, I haven't got <laughs> I haven't got much experience of breastfeeding babies, but I've got it on fairly good authority that um, when you haven't been you haven't slept for two days, you're awake at four in the morning, changing nappies and things like this. It can be hard to know sort of whether you're coming or going, let alone uh, what boob to use next. <laughs> Um, and here's another one as well, and it's one I thought of. I bought these jumpers, um, but they were cold wash jumpers, so it's a bit irritating, but I, I got them on it. There was a good deal, so I thought I'll, I'll get them. Um, but then you have to remember that you've got to treat them a bit differently to normal clothes. So rather than chucking them all in the same laundry basket, I thought I'd keep a plastic bag, and then on entry to the laundry basket, I could put them in the plastic bag, to uh, prevent them being forgotten and, and put in with the rest and ruined. And we've actually um, had someone comment on that one saying that it's uh, you know, a good idea and they will, they'll adopt it in the future. So to start developing um, the way we talk, think and talk about resilience, um, I'd like to introduce some more concepts that we can use to do this. So coming up with a strategy, we like to think of as a the big R, so that's that moment of innovation where you might come up with something. And then the little r is maybe someone else seeing you or reading about the strategy, and that's the little r. So they're taking your innovation and adopting it for their own practice. And what I'd like to do now is to introduce you to, uh, we'll go through this story, uh, which is the romance part of my talk. <laughs> Um, and it's about the Frey Bento's pie, and hopefully this will really colour sort of like our conception of resilience, and you'll be able to think about this later on in the day. Um, has everyone come across the Frey Bento's pie before? Yeah, yeah some. Um, I, I've actually brought some in for those who wanted to look at them. <laughs> so if you could pass that round. And there's, because when, I, when I've mentioned this before, uh, people are always intrigued at how you get a pie in a tin. And so I thought I'd bring some along uh, just to look at. Um, but basically, this is a story uh, back when I was at the University of Warwick um, doing my psychology degree. And um, I, we were settling in for a night, me and my girlfriend, uh, for a romantic meal. Um, it looked much like this, except... Um, no champagne and no candles and no Chianti either. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's slightly different. But um, I was sat in the corner and she was preparing, starting to prepare the meal. And um, she took the first step and she took off the lid of the pie. And, um, and then she was ready for the second step. But to access the second step, you might notice a problem as the pies are going around. The instructions are actually on the bottom. <laughs> so, as I've looked over, I've seen her go to raise the pie above her head. And I just shouted over and I was like, no, no, no. And I uh, managed to stop her just in time. And I thought, that there must be a better way of doing this. And um, I paused for a second and then, it, and then it hit me. I thought, well, rather than handle the now open pie, we've got some more in the cupboards. So, we put the open pie down, uh, went to the cupboards, and accessed the instructions from the back. And um, this safe evening, I ended up with my dinner and I didn't have a very angry girlfriend with pie all over her face. And, uh, and, and we had a, a nice evening. Um, so that was the big R. That was the creation of the strategy, reducing the risk. And, and this now performed part of our resilience repertoire. So that's the things that you can activate to uh, use. Um, so a week later, um, she did the same thing, she opened the top, she needed the instructions, but without any intervention from me, and um, without battering an eyelid, she went straight to the cupboard and retrieved um, the instructions from there. So that was the little R, she had adopted one of the strategies that we had come up with. And so we can use these concepts to try and think, think about human error and threats and resilience a bit more. Um, when I've been in hospital, relating this back to my day job again, um, I've noticed that nurses often organise treatment for their work um, by counting things and assembling things on trays and trolleys. And we think this is, really helps their monitoring. 
and um, I'd like to relate this back to assembling IKEA furniture. And I recently assembled one of these uh, with my girlfriend. And uh, what we did before we started was to separate everything out, count everything, make sure we, we had everything. We actually had an extra bit. But we knew that from the start then. So if we got all the, way, all the way to the end and had an extra bit, we might have been really quite worried about that. Um, but, but thankfully, uh, that all went okay. Um, it's probably the biggest test of our relationship so far, but you'd like to know that we, we got through it and managed to understand it um, fairly, fairly well. And so just as a summary um, of the talk, we've covered that human error is pervasive and is a problem and something we need to think about uh, quite well. Um, but we don't just need to submit ourselves uh, to human error helplessly. We can develop these resilient strategies and we can, we can uh, improve our resilience repertoire to, against these threats. And um, we can use the big R in terms of creating these strategies anew, or we can use the little R so other people can adopt them. Um, just to acknowledge um, uh, my supervisor, Professor Anne Blanford and Jonathan Back, in uh, having extensive discussions and work with these ideas. Um, and also others on the climate project that have been involved as well. And that's it. Thank you.